Should have been another one back in in in, in there. Did you work that hole? Those fish been jumping. There we go. There we go. Good. Got, Got him. Ha! Huh. Yeah. Oh, oh. Look at him. Look at him bulldogging around. Yeah, Al, you're Grubbing. talking. Yep. Look at him. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hot feet there. Look at that. Look at that guy go. It's rubbed up good. What a nice fish, man. Yep. Al's talking about that warm weather and these fish lighten up. Lighten up in the afternoon. And they sure do, man. And why is that? Well, sometimes it's because, oh, look at that guy. A beautiful fish. Sometimes it's because the craws come out, out of the rocks. And that little tube right there is a perfect imitation for a crawdad, you know, but let's take a look at some of the science behind crawdads. I think you'll find this interesting. You know, I gotta be honest. When I started digging in and doing research about crawdads for this show, I was blown away. And I stumbled across a research project that was done in 1998 by Virginia Tech and Earthwave Productions. I figured I'd show it to you guys. Check it out online for the full show. Scientists refer to crayfishes as keystone species because they play a key role in aquatic ecosystems and serve as a vital link in the food chain. Crayfish to me are an amazing animal because they eat such a wide variety of organisms. And it's hard to pinpoint another animal that consumes so many different food sources. For example, they'll eat rotting uh, leaves and twigs and that type of material that we refer to as detritus. They eat animal flesh. Insects are a large part of their diet when they're young. They'll even eat rotting fish flesh from dead fish. They'll eat other crayfish. They'll eat live plants. They'll eat uh, algae, another plant, but, but uh, single-celled plants. Some people suspect that they may even eat microscopic organisms that are in the rotting leaves and twigs on the bottom or in the water column. They have the ability to filter water through their gills and collect food items out of that water. The different kinds of food sources that are eaten by crayfishes and ultimately packaged as the animal itself are channeled up the food chain to fish and to non-fish species such as bullfrogs, turtles, birds, raccoons, and otters. In fact, there are very few animals that venture near or live within a stream that don't eat crayfishes, including humans. Also known as crawfish, crawdad, and mudbug, the crayfish is a freshwater crustacean which belongs to an important group of aquatic animals called decapods. That means having 10 legs, and the group also includes shrimp, crabs, and lobsters. Crustaceans all have segmented bodies, outer shells or exoskeletons, and paired jointed limbs. One of the richest diversities of crayfishes found in the world occurs in the United States, east of the Rocky Mountains, where some 320 species inhabit a wide range of freshwater environments, including lakes and streams, springs, swamps, and even underground waters or aquifers where the elusive cave crayfish is sometimes found. Crayfishes, like fish, breathe through gills, but they can live extended periods of time out of water as long as their bodies are damp and their gills are wet. The average lifespan for crayfishes is about three years, although some cave crayfishes may live for a decade or more. Crayfishes come in a variety of stunning colors, shapes, and sizes. Dwarf crayfishes, for example, rarely grow larger than an inch or weigh more than a fraction of an ounce, while the red swamp crayfish can grow to six or seven inches and weigh around two ounces. The hard outer shell or exoskeleton of the crayfish is made of calcium carbonate extracted from the water and secreted in layers. This limestone suit of armor helps provide protection against predators. All crayfishes, crabs, and shrimp grow by shedding or molting their exoskeletons. 
During this molting period, crayfishes are called soft shells because their exoskeleton is somewhat soft and rubbery, but it soon hardens to its normal condition, which is when they are called hard shells. Molting is a very stressful time for crayfishes, during which they are most vulnerable to predation and pollution. Crayfishes molt many times from when they are hatched through the first year of life, but as adults they will molt only once or twice per year. Just think, this documentary was done 20 years ago. That's amazing. I think the reason that the smallmouth populations in these Canadian lakes do so well is partially because of the spread of the crawfish. They are a plentiful, adaptable, constant, stable food source. In these lakes up here, that afternoon bite is always better than the morning bite early in the year like this, always. Come summertime, it's a little different story. But you let that water warm up a little bit and these licks are loaded with craws and in the morning those craws, they're staying tucked, tucked away under the rocks. You know, when that sun comes out, they come out, start crawling around a little bit. And that's when the smallmouth, they know they, they're programmed to feed in the afternoon early in the year when those craws come out from under those rocks. You see them laying up on top of the rocks and everything and those smallmouth know it. So that it's shout time. Got a good one. Come good on. one. Good, good one. Nice. Who does he got he, you wrapped he, around? He's got something? me wrapped in the wood. Oh. He's off. He's off. He had me wrapped in the wood. <laughs> that was a big fish. Yeah. That was a big uh, fish, Dan. Serves him right for catching all those fish in front of me. 